This is the Value Investor Podcast with Tracy Reinick. All things value, all the time. Welcome back, value investors. Recently, given that value stocks are back in favor, a lot of people have jumped on the Warren Buffett bandwagon. We've been on this bandwagon for a long time here on the Value Investor Podcast, as why wouldn't we be? Obviously, Buffett is one of the greatest value investors, if not the greatest of all time. So, of course, we look at his portfolio often. We talk about him. We've talked about his strategies, what we like about him, what we don't like. It's basically a Buffett festival on this podcast. And you can always tell when value is back in a big way because suddenly Buffett is in favor again, but not just with those of us who are, you know, nerdy value investor types, but everyone else suddenly kind of jumps on board. And then I have noticed recently that the cult of Warren Buffett is back in a big way. And I would throw Charlie Munger in with it because They do operate kind of together with Berkshire Hathaway, obviously, and Munger just turned 99. Congrats to him. Uh, He's looking amazing. And so suddenly I'm seeing all these pictures with them. And I don't think that's just because the algorithm knows that I am a Buffett fan myself, but because he's back in favor and this cult-like phenomenon is starting to ramp up. It's not real bad yet, but it is starting to ramp up. Now, I did notice at the end of 2022 that there were a lot of charts going around on Twitter depicting Berkshire Hathaway, the stock, versus Kathy Wood's ARK Innovation ETF. That's her flagship, the ARKK. And I'm sure you can guess why that chart was floating around. And they even had like pictures of, you know, Buffett's face, and then they had Kathy's face with arrows pointing with the the big chart of Arc K, which soared over, you know, the pandemic years and now has crashed way down. And then kind of just the slow and steady gains of Berkshire Hathaway. Now, this was a five-year chart. And so over those last five years, Berkshire is that's BRKB for those who don't know. Some sites have it like dash B, some sites have it period B, B as in boy, but it's BRKB. And that those shares are up 76.3% over the last five years. The S&P 500 by comparison now up 44.5 over those five years, but ARK Innovation, the AR. KK is now down 18.9% during that time period because of last year. The 2022 was just terrible for ARK K and it got crushed down. And it does tell you what can happen when you are in an investment in a stock or an ETF or a mutual fund that is outperforming for many years and then suddenly has a year that's as bad as, you know, down over 60%. So it really brings your overall returns down. Now, up until 2022, which was the worst year for RK since its inception, it was beating uh, these other, you know, metrics, uh, the Berkshire and S&P 500. So it is really just that one year so far that has caused it to have this dilemma of you know this poor performance. But that isn't stopping the value fans and those of Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway for po- from posting these charts. So I also saw that many people were not just comparing you know the overall, Uh, gains that Berkshire Hathaway made versus ARK K, but they were literally basically comparing uh, not just investment styles, but investment abilities of Warren Buffett and Kathy Wood, that somehow Buffett himself was now beating ARK K. But that's why I wanted to do this podcast this week, because That is not an accurate comparison, (laughs) even though one is growth, the other is value. So you think you'd want to compare them. And Kathy is a great investor for growth. Buffett is one of the greatest investors ever for value. 
but Berkshire Hathaway is a corporation. It's a holding company of all these other assets. And ARK K is actually an ETF fund. So they are not the same things. And so when you're comparing them, you can't really compare them as one to one. So Berkshire Hathaway, uh, the stock that moves as investors buy and sell it. I'm owning the entire holding company when I own BRKB. Uh, the value in BRKB is based on the underlying assets. So if I own BRKB, I own Geico, I own BNSF Railroad. That's what I own. I own Dairy Queen, I own Pampered Chef. Uh, you know, we could go on Seas Candy. I own all of those assets. Berkshire Hathaway is a holding company for all of those. If I own Arc K, I'm owning a basket of stocks in an ETF. I don't own any businesses. So Arc K does not own Tesla. It's not Tesla is not in Arc K. The stock is though. So that's the difference. And Arc K, that ticker will move up and down based on the value of the shares of the stock it owns. So for instance, over the last five days here to start 2023, ARK is up about 10%. How could that be? Is it because everyone is suddenly buying the ARK ETF? No, it's because its largest holdings are up to start the year and up some of them kind of dramatically actually up double digits. So ARK's largest holding now is exact sciences ticker EXAS for those interested. Exact Sciences is nearly 10% of Art K's portfolio now. So if it has a big move up or down, it will move Art K on the daily chart as well. So what's happened to Exact Sciences in 2023? It's had a big move up over 20% on news that it's finally gonna be profitable for a full year. They have finally announced ahead of schedule that they're gonna be profitable in 2023. They were expected to be in 2024. Exact Sciences is the maker of Cologuard. You've probably seen their ads on TV or the radio or you know internet, Twitter, wherever you are. And Cologuard is a screening test for colorectal cancer. So they've been expanding their market share in that testing area and revenues are up and now they're cutting some of their expenses, cutting back a bit on R&D and they're finally gonna be profitable. So those shares have soared starting here in 2023. Kathy Wood has made a big bet on exact sciences. As I said, it is now the number one position in the portfolio, nearly 10% of the portfolio. So that has helped RK shares move up here in 2023. Second position is Zoom Video. It's only up 0.8% here in 20, or yeah, in these are the last five days, not even in 2023. Over the last five days, it's up only 0.8%. Tesla is the third biggest, it's up 2.4. It's finally kind of stopped the slide in recent days. It's now 6.9% of the portfolio. But when you start adding up a couple of these uh, and they start seeing these nice gains in a short period of time, ARK is gonna see those nice gains too. Number four in ARK is Roku, and that's up about almost 9% in the last five sessions. So again, it moves differently than Berkshire Hathaway. So Berkshire Hathaway has uh, been performing quite well over the last several weeks, even at the end of 2022 into 2023. But um, it doesn't matter what is happening in its underlying portfolio for those shares to go up. So when Apple, that's its largest holding now, when that goes up, it doesn't move the stock. So Apple is just owned as an asset. Those shares are within Berkshire Hathaway, the holding company. Similarly, when uh, stocks in the Berkshire portfolio like Apple pays dividends, you as a shareholder, if you own BRKB, you don't get the dividend from that. Berkshire Hathaway gets the dividend. They own that, they own those shares. 
they own that asset. So they're getting dividends from Apple. They're getting, you know, a billion dollars a year or more, I think it is now, from the Apple dividend because they own so many shares. Uh, they're getting similarly huge amounts from Chevron because that was yielding out three to four percent and they own so many shares. So they're getting a couple billion dollars, but it's not coming to you as a dividend, but it would come to you in an ETF or a mutual fund because those, the structure of those, those uh, are meant to pay you as a shareholder. You're owning a basket of the assets in there. You're owning those stocks in that ETF. So it's paid out to you. It is, as I said, a different type of structure. It's easy to compare or to confuse the two because we keep hearing about you know, Buffett's portfolio. What has Buffett bought in his portfolio? He does operate a portfolio within Berkshire Hathaway with the extra cash Berkshire has generated. He has chosen to invest some of it in equities. Um, but that is different than a mutual fund or an ETF fund that is in equities where their sole purpose is to run that portfolio and that's it, that they own the equities, they own those stocks. That means you as an investor own those stocks, um, that group of stocks as well, the basket, as I've mentioned. So again, when Occidental or um, Chevron rise in the portfolio, that doesn't necessarily mean that Berkshire stock is going to, but it does mean that with ARK K, because it is dependent on the underlying stocks in that portfolio. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these. When you're thinking, oh, I can compare these, oh, Buffett's a better, quote unquote, better investor or portfolio manager than Kathy Wood is, they're, they're two totally different things. Kathy Wood does not own a railroad, <laughs> like she just doesn't. She owns shares in companies, but she does not own actual businesses. So let's think about Berkshire and what it means now. Um, you know, everybody's going on and on about how it's beating Arc K and all of that. Well, is it cheap? Is Berkshire itself a value stock? That's something value investors have to be asking, right? Because a lot of people seem to be buying Berkshire Hathaway on the basis that, oh, now I'm getting a value. I'm I'm a value investor because I'm investing in with Buffett in Berkshire Hathaway. But are you? Does he own only value stocks? And is Berkshire Hathaway himself? Is that a value? I took a look just uh, quickly at the actual, you know, just uh, PE ratios, price to book, price to sales, all that on Berkshire BRKB. It's PE forward PE right now is 19. That's above the S&P 500. It's not cheap. I wouldn't put a value stock for the most part, although there's some screens I do run under 20, but the PE at 19 is pretty elevated. It has a peg of 2.7. That's not indicating any value. Peg indicating value is one or less. So it's not super high, but it's not what I would be screening for when I'm looking for like classic value. Price to book ratio is 1.5. So that one is within the value parameters. I run screens that look for under two or under three. So 1.5 gets you there. So we have a winning, a winning one on price to book. Price to sales ratio is 2.35. That's not cheap. Remember, price to sales is one or less, and that indicates that, say, I'm getting a price to sales ratio of 0.7. That means I'm paying 70 cents for every dollar in the sales that that company is generating. So right now, I'm paying $2.35 for every dollar that Berkshire Hathaway's companies are generating. So it's actually, you know, not on the cheap side. It's I'm actually paying more. So it's not cheap. 
what do the earnings look like? Earnings expected to be up 22.5% in 2022. That's pretty impressive, especially for an older company, a lot of like old economy companies in there, like a railroad um, insurance to have earnings up 22.5. That's impressive, as I said. 2023 expected to be up again, 11.9%. So I'm liking that. But again, you have to ask as an investor, how expensive, how much am I willing to pay for those earnings? And right now, a lot of people are saying, I'm willing to pay a premium. I'm willing to pay 19 times. I'm willing to pay a peg of 2.7. Price to sales, 2.4. I am getting a little bit cheaper on price to book. But everything else is rather pricey. It's not nosebleed levels. It's not super high Kathy Wood levels that she had in some of her stocks that she owned in her portfolio. But this isn't exactly dirt cheap or even really classic value by any means. So I'm a little leery of everyone diving into Berkshire Hathaway simply to own value. Berkshire Hathaway has components that aren't value at all. It owns Amazon shares after all, and it bought a while ago. It, I wonder. I keep wondering when he's going to add more to that position. It's a very small position, and uh, they have never sold out of it. But now that Amazon is down big, why not add to it? They did not in the third quarter. So I'm wondering if they did in the fourth quarter, but we'll know soon when they uh, tell us with those filings um, in a couple of weeks, what is going on with with this portfolio. But, um, you know, Apple's no longer cheap. He did buy it cheap initially, but those shares are no longer cheap. So you have to ask, like, why are value investors diving into Berkshire? It's not much of a value stack right now. But taking a look at some of the other holdings, so I just mentioned Apple and I said it wasn't cheap. It has a PE now of 21 times. That is down from when it was trading at 30 times only like a year ago or a year and a half ago. And I would complain about it whenever we talked about Buffett that it was pricey. And so it is cheaper, but again, it's above the S&P 500. It's not much of a value here at 21 times. Uh, Bank of America, they are pretty cheap and he's owned that for a long time. Banks are out of favor, so that fits in with the value. Uh, it's trading at nine and a half times. Uh, he owns Coke, that's one of his biggest holdings. Uh, a lot of the uh, consumer companies like Coke, Pepsi, um, Dr. Pepper, Snapple, a lot of them have been a good place to hide out. A lot of the food companies, they have been able to raise prices to counter inflationary pressures. And Coke now trading at 24.4 times. That's certainly not cheap for a company that has fairly low growth. I would say it's pretty expensive. And then another one that rounds out some of his top holdings, American Express trading at 14 times there. Um, he does own Chevron, that's a big holding too. Let me see what that one is trading at. It's been cheap for a while, even though it's had the big run up. Um, and But earnings have also run up, so it's now at 10.8 times. So not too expensive on a PE basis, but watch those earnings and see what happens there. If they come down big, it, it will be much more pricey if they start coming down in a big way. So just looking at some of Berkshire's holdings, I'm not seeing a lot of cheapness or value there. They did buy in the third quarter Taiwan Semiconductor, ticker TSM. Their reporting earnings, by the time you're listening to this, they would have already reported. And so check that out. They were pretty cheap when they bought them in the third quarter. We'll be interested to see if they added to their position in the fourth quarter because the semis continue to get beat up. Uh, they're trading at 14 times right now. So we'll see what happens with that. It is a small uh, part of Berkshire's portfolio. It's just 1.39% of the total portfolio. And keep in mind, Berkshire is very heavily weighted to the top 10 holdings now. They are 87.2% of the entire portfolio is found in just those top 10 positions. So uh, that's where they're gonna see the best part of their uh, you know, 
gains are going to be in those. They get big winners there. Obviously, they've had a few in Chevron, especially Apple over the last five or six years has been a big winner. And now they're just waiting on uh, Buffett's waiting on Bank of America to finally do something and cash in there. And will this be the time for the banks? We don't know, but he's been pretty patient waiting on that one. So again, um, under, I understand the need to compare the growth with the value. And the obvious comparison is the big growth investor, Kathy Wood, with the big value investor, Warren Buffett. But these uh, investing, uh, these two investments have very different structures, also really different goals. So keep that in mind when you're considering them and and obviously one is investing in disruptive innovating companies. The other one is trying to get companies as cheaply as he can. Uh, so very different kind of outlooks and uh, strategies. So ARK K since inception is still up 70%. The S&P 500 during that time period, it was uh, it launched in 2014, is up 94.2. Berkshire Hathaway since the ARK inception is up 127%. And most of this is because of what's happened in the last year, right? Um, so timing matters, timing is everything. But that's why you got to be a longer investor. That's why even with Berkshire Hathaway, it's had many years of underperformance as well. The stock, I'm not talking about the portfolio at all, but the stock itself has had numerous years when values been out of favor and people thought Buffett has lost his touch and Berkshire is just a bunch of old slow growing companies. I don't want to own that. The stock is underperformed, but it's back in favor because Value is back in favor. Warren Buffett is back in favor. The cult of Buffett is coming back. And I expect that to continue to build some momentum with a new group of investors who maybe aren't as familiar with value investing, are new to it, are just discovering Buffett, which makes me think I should do some books. I should do a podcast on some books that are the best books about Warren Buffett, right? That would be a good podcast because there's a lot of good info out there. And maybe I'll bring back a podcast or two about The Intelligent Investor. I know some of you are back to reading that, and it's always a good one to check in on again to get some good tips from Benjamin Graham, who was the the boss the mentor of Warren Buffett and is also considered to be one of the greatest value investors of all time as well. So a lot going on in value investing, but remember you don't have to be all in one or the other. You can still own some growth stocks along with your value. We're not Warren Buffett. We're not running a mutual fund or an ETF that's only focused on value or only on growth. So we can own both. Why not? Why not do it? So let me recap some of the tickers I talked about. There is Berkshire Hathaway itself, BRK dot or slash B, depending on how you uh, put it in on the tracker or site you're using, BRK, B is in boy. Then um, I did talk about RK, A R K K is the ticker there, as we all know. And some of the components in Berkshire, Apple, AAPL, of course. Then we had Bank of America, BAC. We had Coke, KO. American Express is AXP, AXP for American Express. Taiwan Semi is TSM. Chevron, CVX. A couple of Kathy's holdings, Exact Sciences, finally gonna be profitable. EXAS, then she has Zoom videos, ZM, 
Tesla, of course, T-S-L-A. I mentioned Roku, that's her fourth largest, R-O-K-U. A lot of interesting stocks on this list, a lot of interesting ways to invest. And as always, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. You can find us on Apple Podcasts. We're on Spotify, we're on Amazon Music, but get us somewhere. And I'll be back again next week because there's plenty going on in value investing with some more value stocks. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.